you heard me mention in the opening the desire of many to uh, have video as well from the Supreme Court. Uh, in the past, we've had this debate, and I've, I've come to the conclusion, clearly it's, it's your decision. Um, and I believe in the independence and the autonomy of a separate branch. I just want you to know there are a lot of folks who, who can't, as you know, can't get into the Supreme Court to watch these arguments. In the case I mentioned and a few others, Brown versus Board of Education, there were historic, brilliant arguments made that only a, perhaps a few hundred people could watch in person. And I know that there are valid reasons why uh, behavior, change, editing, and so forth. Um, we flub up a lot here, but we're on C-SPAN. And uh, so our mistakes are live. And while in a democracy, as Justice, as you know, the trains don't always run on time, we don't always look our best, and maybe it has a negative impact. The last time we had the discussion, it was the anniversary of the release of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. The reason I bring that up is when that movie was released, it was screened before an audience which was largely U.S. Senate, and uh, uh, they didn't like it. <laughs> it didn't make us look good. The irony was it was also screened in Moscow and Berlin, and they made the decision not to show it in their countries because they thought it made us look too good. Uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Uh, I'd just like your thoughts on um, if there's an evolving sense within the court of whether or not to uh, expand to at least some limited video feeds of the arguments. The first thing I think I should say is that all of my colleagues and I share your interest in making our proceedings and everything that the court does as accessible to the public as we possibly can, consistent with the performance of our paramount function, which is to decide cases uh, in the best possible way. And I, I was thinking about this issue of access before coming over here, and what I'm going to say will date me, but uh, what occurred to me was how much more accessible the Supreme Court is now than it was when I started out as a lawyer. Uh, and even before that, when I was interested in the work of the Supreme Court when I was in college and, and even in high school, if someone back in those pre-internet days wanted to read a, an opinion that was issued by the court a few years ago, uh, it wouldn't be that easy to find a library with reports of the Supreme Court. Um, certainly the little municipal library where I grew up didn't have that. So you'd have to find a law library or a big library that had the US reports or one of the commercial services. And then if you wanted to take a copy home and read it and study it, you would have to, you might be able to make what we called in those days a Xerox copy. Uh, by feeding money into a machine. Now, every opinion that we issue is instantly available on our website. If you read an article in the paper about a decision that had just been handed down and you wanted to see exactly what the court said, that would be even more difficult. You would have to find a law library with a subscription service called US Law Week, and that was an expensive subscription service. And then you might get a little account of the argument if it was an important case. And you would be able within about a week to read the court's opinion. Now, if you wanted a transcript, uh, that would be extraordinarily difficult. You'd have to find a very good law library, and you wouldn't be able to get that for years. If you wanted to read the party's briefs, that would also be extremely difficult. Now, all of that is available free of charge to anybody who has access to the internet. Uh, we, we issue a transcript of all of our oral arguments on the day when the argument takes place. And today, it used to be a few years ago, uh, the, the person, the justice asking a question wasn't identified in the transcript. Now all the justices are identified. So you can see exactly what was said, every single word. And we release the audio of all of our arguments by the end of the week. But then we get to the issue uh, on which there's a lot of interest, and that is televising our arguments. And, and I recognize that most people think that our arguments should be televised. 
Most of the members of my family think that arguments should be televised. I used to think they should be televised. <laughs> when I was on the Third Circuit, we had the opportunity to vote on whether we wanted to allow our arguments to be televised, and I voted in favor of it. But when I got to the Supreme Court, I, I saw things differently, and it wasn't because I was indoctrinated or pressured by my colleagues, but I came to see, and I do believe, that allowing the arguments to be televised would undermine their value to us as a step in the decision-making process. I, I think it, that lawyers would find it irresistible to try to put in a little soundbite in the hope of being that evening on CNN or Fox or MSNBC or one of the broadcast networks. And that would detract from the value of the, uh, of the arguments in the decision-making process. But I that sort of thing never happens here. So. <laughs> you know, I recognize times change, and uh, I don't know what our successors years from now will think, or maybe even, even next year. But uh, it has been a while since the members of the court collectively have discussed this issue, but it has been our consensus for a while that this would not be that although we want as much access as possible, we don't want access at the expense of damaging the decision-making process. Justice Kagan, your thoughts? Th thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman. And if I could just thank all of you for the invitation to be here. We very much appreciate it, Justice Alito and I and the entire court. As to this question, I, I find it a very difficult question. And like Justice Alito, my views on this question have uh, somewhat evolved over time. And um, if, if you'll, if you'll uh, ag agree to let me get to the place where I tell you about the cons of cameras, I will start by telling you about the pros and very much sympathizing with some of the things that you said, Chairman Quigley, because um, I, I think more than just uh, transparency for transparency's sake, uh, the, uh, the good of having cameras would be that people would see an institution at work, which I think does its work pretty well. Um, uh, when I was Solicitor General, one of the jobs of Solicitor General, in addition to arguing every month, is that you're always there when members of your office argue. And so um, the time I was Solicitor General, I probably sat as a spectator for about 75% of the Supreme Court's arguments. And, and I was constantly um, impressed by how the court went about its business, um, that uh, 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 it was thoughtful and it was probing and it was obvious that the justices really wanted to get things right. And uh, it's no small benefit if the American public were able to see that because uh, faith in institutions of governance is an incredibly important thing. And, and, uh, and for me, the greatest uh, positive of, of uh, having cameras would be that it would um, allow the public to see an institution working thoughtfully and deliberately and very much trying to get the right answers, all of us together. Um, but having said that, I will uh, wholeheartedly agree with Justice Alito that the most important thing is that the institution continue to function in that way, not that people see it. If, if the seeing it came at the expense of the way the institution functioned, that would be a very bad bargain. And uh, I do worry that uh, cameras might come at that expense. Um, uh, you know, there's that, um, I think it's a pr principle of physics, I think, uh, which is about how when you put the observer, uh, when the observer comes into, the, the observed thing changes. And uh, you commented on Congress, and you know, if you all uh, were given truth serum, I think some of you might agree that hearings change when cameras are there. Now, I have to say, I think that they might change in the court in subtle ways. Uh, I don't think all that many people would grandstand. Uh, I hope that uh, my colleagues and I would not do that. But I think we would filter ourselves in ways that would be unfortunate. In other words, the first time you see something on the evening news, which taken out of context uh, suggests something that you never meant to suggest, um, uh, suggests that you have an opinion on some issue that you in fact don't have, 
but that, you, you know, when I come into the courtroom, I play devil's advocate. I probe both sides hard, and uh, I, I, I challenge people in ways that might sound as though uh, I have views on things that I, in fact, do not, just because that's uh, the best way of really understanding the pros and cons of, of, of a case. And I worry that that kind of questioning, which, which I think we all find uh, very conducive to good decision making, would uh, would uh, you know be damaged if 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 there were cameras? So I I I think as Justice Alito expressed, I think this is a hard issue. I think that there are things to be said on both sides of it, and I do want want to emphasize, as he emphasized, that we haven't spoken about this together as a conference um, since I've been at the court. Um, uh, but um, but 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 I think that there is real value to being deliberate and to being careful and to not doing things that we would later regret in terms of uh, how the institution operates. And I will say just one last point. In addition to all the things that Justice Alito said about the ways in which we are transparent, I think that the most crucial way that we are transparent is that all our decisions get made with reasons. In other words, you always know, or almost always, uh, when we make decisions, why we are making them, and the views of um, of the various justices of the court, that's the most important thing, far more important than the arguments, which in fact uh, play a very limited role in our decision-making process. Thank you so much.